Hey guys, today what we're going to be doing is looking at volumes of cylinders, cones, and spheres. So basically what we're doing is looking at all the shapes that we uh, saw last lesson, or the last three lessons, and we're going to combine them to make other shapes. So let's start with this one. I essentially have half a sphere on top of a cylinder. So what I do on these are kind of like a puzzle. I look at the shapes that I'm dealing with and I already write the formula down. So for volume of a cylinder, the volume of a cylinder is pi r squared times the height. Then I also have a volume of the sphere. So the sphere's volume is volume equals 4 thirds pi r cubed. But I want you to realize um, I have only half a cylinder. So what I'm going to do to represent half a cylinder in black, I'm going to take the entire volume of the sphere and I'm going to divide it by 2. So first thing that I want to do is make sure I have all my pieces. I have my radius of my cylinder and I also have my height. If I look at my sphere, the radius of the cylinder is going to be equal to the radius of the sphere. So this would also then be 10. Now that I have all my pieces, once I find the volume of the um, cylinder and the volume of half a sphere, I'm going to add those two volumes together. So let's first go ahead and start with the volume of the cylinder. So the volume equals 3.14 times 10 to the second power times 20. So this is going to give me the volume is equal to 3.14 times 100 times 20. So volume is going to be... If I multiply these together, 314 times 20. And then if I multiply these together, the volume would be uh, 6280, 6280 meters cubed. So this took care of volume of the cylinder. All that work that I just showed was the volume of the cylinder. Now I need to find the volume of half the sphere. So whatever that is, I'm going to add it to my final answer down here. So in red, what this is going to look like is I have 4 thirds pi, which is 3.14, times my radius, which is 10 to the third power. So 10 times 10 times 10 is 1,000. So I'm going to have 4 thirds times 3.14 times 1,000. And then 1,000 times uh, 3.14 is... I'm going to have 4 thirds times 3,140. And then I'm just going to take this number and times it by 4 thirds. So if I bring up my calculator, I'm going to have um, 3,140 times 4 divided by 3. And this would be 4, 1, 8, 6, and 2 thirds. Or you could put 0. 0.6 repeating. Now I'm going to, so that's the volume of the half the sphere. Ooh, I made one mistake. That's the volume of the entire sphere. So in order to find half the sphere, I'm going to divide this answer by 2. So if I divide it by 2, I'm going to have 2,093 and one third. Now I'm going to take that answer and add it to the volume of the cylinder. So the volume of the cylinder was 6,280, and I'm going to add that to the volume of half a sphere, which is 2,093 and one third. So when I add these two together, my final answer of this composite shape is 8,373 and one third meters cubed. Okay? So let's go ahead now and look at the next one. This shape is a cylinder and a cone stacked on top of each other. So the first thing that I want to notice is the volume of the cylinder. Volume of the cylinder, once again, is pi r squared times the height. Volume of a cone is one third pi r squared. Okay. So now what we're going to, oh, times the height. So what we're going to do now is I, uh, once I find the volume of the cylinder and the volume of the cone, I'm going to add those values together. So let's go ahead and start in purple of looking at the volume of the cone. Um, if I, it doesn't give me a radius, it gives me a diameter. So if the radius is, excuse me, if the diameter is 5, that means the radius is going to be 2.5. Now on the cone, you can't see the back part of it, but it would look like this. The radius would also be 
So let's go ahead and start now in looking at volume of the cylinder. Volume is equal to 3.14 times 2.5 to the second power times the height, which is 6. So if I take out my calculator and I can begin to solve these, I'm going to have 2.5 to the second power times 6 times 3.14. So that means the volume is 117.75 centimeters cubed. So now let's go ahead and look at the volume of the cone. Let's plug everything in. The volume is equal to 1 third times 3.14 times my radius, which is 2.5 times the height, and the height of the cone is 3. Now I want you guys to notice that I am timesing by 1 third and 3. Those are just going to cancel, so I don't even need to include them in my equation. And so this is all I need to uh, worry about. So I'm going to do 2.5 to the second power, which is 6.25, times 3.14. And that means the volume of the cone is 19.625. I'm going to add these volumes together. And they both have the same units, which is centimeters cubed. And that's going to be 117.75 plus 19.625 is, I messed my, dec missed my decimal. I'll try one more time. 117.75 plus 19.625 equals 137.375. It says round your answer to the nearest tenth, so it'll be 137.4 centimeters cubed. So let's go and look at one more now. This one's a little different. We have a rectangular prism and we basically cut a hole right through the center. So what I'm going to do is find the area of the box and since there's a hole that looks like the shape of the cylinder, I'm going to minus the cylinder. So let's go ahead. First, what I'm going to do is find the area of the box. So the area of the box is length times width times height. And I'm going to minus the area of the cylinder. Remember, volume of a cylinder is pi r squared times height. So if I find the area of the box, this would be 10 times 14 times 12. And this would, if I brought up my calculator, this would be 10 times 14 times 12 is 280 inches cubed. Now I'm going to minus the volume of the uh, cylinder. That would be then 3.14 times, my radius is shown right here. It is a radius. It's 2 to the second power. And my height from here to here is the same as the height from here to here. So my height is 12. So I'm going to have 3.14 times 4 times 12, which is going to be 3.14. I'm going to multiply 4 and 12 to get 36, excuse me, to get 48. And I'm going to multiply those two. So I'm going to have 48 times 3.14. And that's going to give me 100 and 50.72 inches cubed. So now all I'm going to do is minus these two values, so 280 minus 150.72, and I'm going to get 129.28 inches cubed. So that's your final answer. So if you guys have any questions on any of these composite shapes, please feel free to email me or your teacher.